So you read the title, and uh, <laughs> to the extent that I can make this promise, it is not clickbait. Uh, my coding bootcamp has several pretty major issues with it currently, and there hasn't really been enough accountability, in my opinion, for those who have fallen behind, and it honestly gives me kind of a weird experience about the bootcamp in general, because the whole purpose of a coding bootcamp is to take as many people as possible from little or no experience to relatively qualified entry-level developers in an expedited amount of time. But honestly, I'm not convinced that this is in General Assembly's best financial interest, and I'll touch a little bit more on that in a little bit. In a nutshell though, it seems like they have more incentive to retain as many students as possible for as long as possible so that they can get past the point where the refund window has been closed therefore keeping as much profits as possible, regardless of student success. I'm not making the claim that this is done intentionally, but it is a natural byproduct of their payment system and of the tuition system of boot camps in general. Why would you bother moving somebody out of the cohort when you could push their lack of performance under the rug and keep their tuition for the long term? The first thing that's going on has been going on since we started this boot camp, and it's that my cohort is tiny. It's pretty small compared to any other cohort that I've heard of. Typically, I've heard of cohorts being anywhere from 20 to 45 students, quite large. My cohort started with 12 people and now we're down to eight. And of those eight, about half of them are behind and most of that half is chronically behind, like a module behind with what we're supposed to be learning at this time. And there really has not been enough accountability for those students that are falling behind. And this leads to the first problem. I don't think General Assembly is really incentivized to have students take that accountability to keep up with the rest of the cohort and really abide by uh, learning what they're supposed to learn in a timely fashion. This kind of gives me a weird feeling about this course and the experience in general. Because the intended objective with a boot camp, the whole reason you attend in the first place is to take as many students as possible from little or no experience to qualified and marketable developers within a short period of time not perfect developers but people who are generally ready to enter the marketplace and get that first junior level position why else would you pay fifteen thousand dollars for an educational course if it's not to get into that first position why else would you do that rather the incentives seem to be more on the side of retaining students than producing a ton of high quality students. Because why would any business get rid of a client and have them stop paying tuition if they could just push their performance or lack of performance under the rug, gather their full tuition before the tuition window closes and keep as much money as possible and contribute to that bottom line. And this issue makes me honestly second guess placement rates of boot camps. Because if this percentage of students in my cohort being this far behind is even close to the average experience, there's no way that the placement rate for graduates can be 80 plus percent. I get it, maybe the dropout rates are higher than they're claiming, but I'm not really convinced that the, of the students that do get through the entire boot camp, 80 plus percent are qualified and are landing jobs within a six month time period. This can also be explained by the current market. It's kind of a tight market right now, pretty hard to find jobs in general, but still even accounting for that, I am just not convinced. General Assembly for reference claims an over 85% placement rate within a six month time period. If you're falling behind in a cohort, you should be taken aside, given more instruction, and as a worst case, be excused from the course or be placed in another cohort. But it also sucks for students that are excelling as well, because if you're doing really well in your boot camp and you're incentivized to do well, but the majority of your students that are with you are not doing very well. Group projects are a huge part of the coding bootcamp experience. And during those group projects, you're gonna end up in a position where you're carrying a lot of the students that are falling behind through those projects. And ultimately the group project ends up being the efforts of maybe two or three people tops. As a part of the bootcamp experience, I thought it would be a good idea to set up a study hall. So we've been meeting once a week on Sundays for two to sometimes three or four hours. It's been very productive, but a lot of what we've been doing in study hall, honestly, has been relearning what we previously learned the day, week, or month before. And this has primarily been because a lot of students just aren't keeping up and we wanna be able to keep the pace with the average, essentially. I mean, 
our philosophy, at least in the study hall, is that we're only as strong as our weakest link. This study hall has been super productive and a really good addition to the boot camp in general. I would definitely recommend to those of you who are a little bit more outgoing or willing to put in that extra effort, especially if you're doing a part-time boot camp, set up a study hall. This has proven super useful and very productive, but one of the biggest indicators that there were some serious issues going on with our boot camp in general is that one of um, my classmates has taken the you know unofficial role of lead instructor for the study hall and most of the students scratch that all of the students including myself have kind of come to the consensus that he's a better instructor than our lead instructor or our instructional assistant all of the students including the ones or especially the ones that are falling pretty far behind are reporting that they're getting better outcomes from learning from this guy than we have the entire time from any of the staff at General Assembly. Speaking of instructional assistants or TAs, General Assembly has TAs and instructional assistants, IAs. I'm probably gonna fall back to TA, but just replace that with IA. TA is easier to remember. But in any case, the second red flag that we've kind of come across is that our TA has been non-existent essentially, completely missing in action. He has not been helpful at all really, this entire cohort. And for most of the cohort, excepting maybe one or two days, he hasn't participated at all in the instruction. Several times our lead instructor has called on him at the end of class to say like, hey Blank, do you have anything to add before we wrap up? And he's just been not there. His camera's been off. In those situations, he hasn't even turned on his mic to say anything. So the most gracious thing you could say about this is like, maybe he doesn't have anything to add, so he just doesn't add anything. But anybody who's actually thinking about that situation knows that he's not attending. He's logging on, not turning on his camera or mic, and then walking away and doing God knows what, playing video games, making a meal, whatever. It doesn't matter. He's not helping. This obviously defeats the whole purpose of having an instructional assistant in the first place because the students that are falling behind should have the opportunity to get pulled into a room with him and go through the material at a slower pace or with a different teaching style so that they can better understand the curriculum, but he has not been there to get that done for us. Instead, they're left to ask a clarifying question to the instructor, maybe two, and then they get a minute or two of reiteration of that topic, and then the instructor has to do his job, which is move on with the curriculum so we can get done with the boot camp in a timely manner. This obviously feels kind of shitty because we're supposed to be able to get, uh, you know, within reasonable limits, as much reiteration of the topics as possible so that we understand how to code before moving on to other topics. And the instructor has to do what he has to do, which is move on and keep pace with the curriculum that General Assembly has established. But the job of the instructional assistant is to help people that are falling behind or help clarify things with students. And he has not been there to do that. About 25% of our cohort has dropped the class so far. And it's not looking good for the rest of the cohort either. I would say about 40% of the remaining students are behind by at least a week, but that's <laughs> that's extremely optimistic. Most are behind by a month or a month and a half, a, a, a whole module. We're nearing the end of the back-end instructional module, and half of the students in our class don't even understand how to write a proper function in JavaScript. I don't know, honestly. I'm certainly not clear of this. Uh, it's not looking good for the class at the moment. I feel like I'm sort of keeping up, not just barely keeping up, but I'm keeping up reasonably well, but I'm to be humble, one of the top students in the class. Out of the eight of us remaining, I'm probably number two or three. I'm not in any way trying to be braggadocious. I'm just trying to objectively describe this situation. I'm sort of hanging on, pretty reasonably hanging on. And the rest of the class with a couple exceptions are extremely far behind. And uh, it this this whole situation just gives me a weird feeling in my stomach. So I will keep you updated. Uh, hopefully things turn around. Peace.